Welcome to the Prisma Quick Start tutorial video, where you'll learn how to implement your own GraphQL server with TypeScript. This is the GraphQL playground for the API we'll build. From the API documentation, we see that we have feed, drafts, and post queries available, as well as create draft, delete post, and publish mutations. Let's send the feed query to see the data we currently have stored in the backend. It returns two published post items. If we change the feed query to drafts, we receive one post that is not published yet. We can now go ahead and publish this draft by copying its ID, opening a new tab, and sending the publish mutation for it. When sending the drafts query again, we only receive an empty list because the draft was published and is now returned by the feed query as well. To get started with Prisma, you need to install the Prisma CLI with npm or yarn. Once the CLI is installed, you can bootstrap your GraphQL server using the prisma init command. We will use the TypeScript basic starter kit from the GraphQL Boilerplates GitHub organization for the purpose of this tutorial. The CLI now prompts me to select a cluster to deploy my Prisma service. Here, I'm going with a public cluster, but you can also deploy locally with Docker. My Prisma database service is now deployed, and the files for my server are bootstrapped in the current directory. Let's explore the file structure. We first have the .graphql config file, which is based on the industry standard GraphQL config and used by tools like the GraphQL CLI or GraphQL Playground. The database directory contains everything that's related to our Prisma database service. First of all, prisma.yaml, which is the root configuration file for our project and contains information like the service name, deployment information, and also points to the data model for the service. The sources directory contains everything that's related to my actual GraphQL server. In schema.graphql, we find the application schema, which defines the API for my server. This corresponds to the API we saw in the beginning of the video. We have the feed, drafts, and post queries, and the create draft, delete post, and publish mutations. The resolvers for these fields are implemented in index.ts, which is also the entry point for my GraphQL server. Notice that the implementation of each resolver is straightforward, since all we need to do is delegate the execution of the incoming query to the Prisma database service. The way how that works is by using a GraphQL binding object called DB, which can be accessed on the context object that's passed through the resolver chain and proxies the queries and mutations to Prisma. The Prisma binding object is attached to the context upon initialization of the GraphQL server. It is imported from the static typings that were generated based on the types in the Prisma schema, which is defined in prisma.graphql. Now, I want to extend my API and add a mutation for updating titles of posts. I therefore add a new field to the application schema that takes the post ID as well as the new title of the post as arguments. To implement that resolver, I navigate back to index.ts and add the new resolver function to my resolvers object. Notice that the resolver has access to the post ID and the new title which are passed in the request. Because the server is based on static GraphQL bindings, I now get auto-completion for the GraphQL mutation in my editor. This is fantastic, and only one of many incredibly helpful features enabled by GraphQL bindings. Now that the resolver is implemented, I can start the server and open up a playground by running yarn dev in my terminal. The playground is similar to the one we saw in the beginning of the video, except that now we have the update title mutation available. So let's use it to change the title of a published post in the feed. I copy the ID of the post, open a new tab, and invoke the update title mutation. Going back to the feed query, we can now see that the title was indeed updated. To learn more about Prisma, go to prismagraphql.com where you get access to the documentation and many tutorials.